Hello everyone and welcome to this experiment, the live streaming of the Jazz Transcription Clinic. And this is an experiment, but I hope that everything is going fine so I can keep doing these things in the future. Uh, today I want to just start a series of episodes on transcribing, of course, on transcriptions, and I want to show you my whole process when approaching a new transcription and what software I'm using and how I'm doing it. So to do so, I have uh, chosen a beautiful solo by Chris Potter on All the Things You Are, uh, it's a duet live uh, concert with uh, Shai Maestro on piano and Chris Potter, of course, on tenor saxophone. And what they do on All the Things You Are is simply gorgeous and uh, beautiful. So I would um, uh, like to show you how I do it. So the software I'm using is called Sound Slice and uh, it's this web uh, platform where you can actually uh, transcribe things uh, in a very convenient way. So you can subscribe to Sounds Lies uh, for free uh, and then you, you can use the platform if you start paying memberships there are different tiers and you get different benefits. Uh, but you can totally use it for free and it's very functional. Um, so I'm going to uh, show you the process. This, uh, this list here um, comprises all the slices that I have created. I have created folders. I have to do some uh, order. Uh, but anyway, uh, you click on new slice in your uh, platform. And you are prompt with many options, as you can see. Start with a scanned image. You can start from a PDF or from a notation file. So Music XML is the a format to share, for example, between Sibelius and Finale or Logic or Pro Tools, if you use those softwares uh, as notation softwares. And you can open the XML file inside sounds lies or you can start from scratch just typing the notes in or what i'm going to choose today is start with the recording so you can click on other recording and then it asks whether you have a youtube video or an audio file or a video file and in this case we are going to grab the youtube uh, video of that gig so all we have to do is go to our link and uh, copy link of the video we go back to some slice and we paste the link and boom we have added the recording now here on top you can see add notation and this is what we want add notation in editor we click here and here we can select the instrument that we are going to transcribe in this case saxophone tenor and this is the main window to transcribe if you grab this handle here you can make the video smaller and this is what I'm going to do because we don't really need uh, all right and to make the music uh, bigger you can click here on the three dots some people call it the hamburger no the hamburger is the three lines so the three dots i don't know what is it called but you have all the options here and you can change the layout from auto to page to fluid to horizontal and here you have a zoom level where you can make the music really big the format i like is fluid so it changes the numbers 
of bars, for example, depending on how big you are going to make the music. Let's start like here. You can have a different play line, play head, like a single line or a small rectangle or a wide rectangle, or you want it hidden. And you can select the color. I like keeping orange. Uh, and then we can close this window. Now, uh, to change the key here, for example, you can select any key. All the things you are is in concert A flat major, so I should select B flat major. But what I like doing is simply transpose in uh, or, or write without any key. Even though in this case the key is pretty um, clear, uh, so I'm going to choose B flat major. And this is convenient because when we want to transpose, for example, our solo. Uh, OK, the transposition is, is not working, is disabled while the notation editor is open. So I'll explain later. Um, so an important step. Um, that we need to do, we click on this um, word, untitled, at the top, and we put some data in, all the things you are. The artist is Chris Potter, and the description, you can put your own description, but it's really important that you do so, and then on top right here, you click on save. If you don't click on save and then something happens that your computer crashes or the internet connection goes lost, you might lose all your work. So remember to save every couple of minutes or every couple of bars that you add. So this is the platform to write the music. And as you can see, there are a bunch of notes here on the left which we are going to choose to write the music. There is the uh, music paper, virtual paper here ready to go and the video here at the top. So you can, for example, uh, oh, I have a Canadian goose writing me a message. Hi, Canadian goose. Uh, this is sound slice. Sorry guys, I, I'm a bit slow, I'm, I'm a bit excited and, uh, and a bit nervous. It's my first live streaming. Um, I'm explaining actually how sound slice works. Um, so, we are ready to go. I was saying, look, that the video is synchronized in our platform, so if I click play, it will start playing, right? And you can hear the music. I hope you can hear. Yeah, good. So the next step is to create sync points. So basically we create the bars. And to do so, we can click here on top, sync. And aha, that's why I have the chat smaller. All right. Um, and in a moment, we should start seeing a waveform here. I don't know if you can read, guys, but here there is a writing saying waveform is processing, but you can still create sync points. So in a short time, we will see some uh, a typical waveform. Hmm? Now, I 
can go and search. I made it a little bit smaller so I can have a look at the whole track. The saxophone only starts after a while and I hope Shy Maestro will forgive me if I just want to transcribe the tenor. Right, and here the saxophone starts. So we can go a little bit back. And now when we hear bar one, and it's, it's pretty understandable where uh, bar one is, I'm going to type the letter T on my computer keyboard, not a music keyboard, but my computer keyboard, the letter T on it. Every time I hear a one, I can press the letter T and that will create a sync point or if you prefer a bar. So I'm going to do that process for at least the first chorus. Here we go. Okay, I have to go back a little bit and that's a little bit more. I got lost uh, but the great thing is that don't worry because you can edit all the sync points as you like I don't know if here Okay, here I got lost, so I'm gonna delete those ones, and I start again. second chorus. Right, 72 bars is two choruses, right? All the things you are is 36 bars. And now we have to create the bars to insert the music into it. So we click here on the left, you have the tools. So here you have the nodes and then bars, and then this is notation, articulation, repeats. And I, I, I will show you a little bit more. Today is just a preparation and maybe tomorrow I do another live streaming and I'll transcribe uh, the solo or part of it if I don't have time to finish it. So uh, we need to create the bars. So I select the bar tool and I click on this add bar after selection. So you see every time I click I add the bar so I need 72 bars. Hmm. Uh, 69, 71, 72. 
there you go. And now everything is synchronized with the bars, more or less. You can see. Yeah, there are some things that I need to uh, check and organize better. It's taking a long time to show me the the uh, waveform. Uh, I don't know, maybe it will do it. It's a long track. So now we can start writing the music. We click on bar one. Oh, by the way, other great functions of sound slides before we start doing it. Uh, let me first move this a little bit higher so you can see also all the instruments. Uh, you see here at the bottom you have sort of controls. You have a keyboard that you can toggle up if you want to check the notes, right? Uh, you have uh, the loop button and I can show you, you can click inside any bar at the top and you can click on loop it will loop that bar right here we have the speed this is super super powerful you can type in the speed that you want you have also some presets or you can do you know minus and plus it goes down by tens Right? And it goes down to 25, guys. Of course, the audio is really corrupted, but when there is a part in this solo where Chris Potter is playing, like, insanely fast, and we might need to go, maybe not 25%, but maybe 50, 60%. So usually, you know, if I can, I keep it 200. Uh, if not, uh, I slow it down. You can extend the loop to the bars that you want by dragging this bar line here. You have also three dots here at the top. Play with count in, play loop only once, right? A lot of a lot of different controls on this one. And there is also a function that is one of my favorite actually. Uh, which is very, very, very handy to practice the solos that you transcribe called speed training. So you set an initial speed, like in this case, 70%, for example, uh, and final speed, 100%, increase speed by 10%. Each speed plays three times. So if I click yes, and I click on start, it, it's going to repeat these first four bars, three times at 70%, and then three times 80%, three times 90%, three times 100%. That's very convenient when you have to practice, you know, hard passages. Have a listen. This is 70. last time at 70 and you will see here down here it will go down up sorry there you go 80 percent right and now last time at 80 and it will go up to 90 right so super exceptional you know control controls over it uh, now let's start to write some few notes and then probably i'll stop this first streaming to check whether all the technical aspects of it are doing are going well and then maybe i'll do another one tomorrow where i actually transcribe the things but I thought it was nice to show you uh, how I do it and 
uh, and also how I prepare my uh, the solos that I want to transcribe. So let's, for example, start with the first two bars. <laughs> Do, do, bo, do. Right? One, two, three, four. Ba, do, ba, do, ba, ba, do. So there is an anacruzi, or there is almost the first bar is almost all empty. There is only the last quaver that is played. And how do I do that? I simply count the beats. One, two, three, four, ba da ba da ba ba da. This is how I do it. I just try to grab the next one, and it's the B flat. Ba do ba da ba da ba ba da da. That will be the first note on bar two. So it means that there is only one note at the end of bar one. Now you see that uh, now <clears throat> there is an empty bar. So. Uh, you can do in many different ways. We need to create a minim rest, a crotchet rest, and a quaver rest before we can insert the first note. So you can do it selecting this uh, note basics and choose the value. But the way I prefer, which is much, much faster, is to use the keyboard. So at the moment, I have selected the whole uh, rest and to increase or decrease the value of the note you can use the the keys plus and minus right on my numeric pad keypad if I click on plus for example I go faster and that's a minimum if I go minus I will go slower so minus refers to longer uh, times and you can see this is a brief semi brief minimum this is what I want and then oh guys I almost forgot I need to save otherwise I can lose everything all right I should set the reminders uh, to, to save everything so i have typed in a minimum rest i click the arrow right to move to the next note and i need to half this uh this other minimum rest so i press plus again and here comes a rest if you want to transform it into a real rest you can press the letter r and now we have a rest and then I have to half this one, so plus again. And I have my quaver rest. And then the first note will be A, right? Bodo, bodo. How do I know that? Uh, that's a bit more complex to explain, but you can use an instrument as a reference, right? Uh, I don't know if I can play tenor sax. Why I can't play the notes? Anyway, I put the note A. Ah, okay. Okay, the keyboard shows um, the concert pitch. But as soon as you type a note, it will sound with this very nice tenor saxophone sound. <laughs> Uh, but it's just a reference that you can use. Or you can use your instrument, you can use a keyboard if you prefer. It doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, so, Chris Potter plays... So remember the first chord and all the things you are is G minor 7 going into C minor 7 for tenor saxophone, talking in B flat transposition. So here we have do do de, do do de. Those three notes should be two quavers and a crotchet, right? 
It's almost a Bach sort of invention at two parts. So again, you see what I've done. I selected the semi brief um, rest and I click plus, plus and plus to make the rhythm a quaver because this is what I want and I want a B flat. So I type the note B and because I selected B flat major key signature the b is already flat and then we have a c right do 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 d a b flat c d and c will be another quaver and then we have a, a d which in this case will be a short crotchet so this is a, a personal preference you can write a crotchet with a marcato on top or you can write a quaver followed by a quaver I think my preference would be to write a crotchet with marcato so I know that I have to play that note really short and sharp if you know what I mean right the marcato is so I will remember that so when I go to uh, sound slice I have to make this quaver a minimum, so I, I press minus now and I have the quaver, uh, the crotchet, and I type the note, the letter D for the note D. Now I want to add the marcato sign here. So usually I put all the articulation at the end, but just to show you today how we do it, we select the notations tool here and we have all the accents you know even for strings some specialized coops uh, like toggle do it or falls you know scoops ghost notes tremolos trills another way to write ghost notes and then tenuto accent staccato and marcato and if you click just on marcato, there you go, you have the note marcato. Right? And we can do. Those are quavers E flat, F, and G. And G is a crotchet, and it's marcato. So instead of clicking on marcato this time, I use the shortcut. If you type the double dot on the keyboard, uh, you toggle the marcato on or off, you see? Right, and now you can go and maybe slow down a little bit and listen whether you have written it in a right way. Click save. Now, I can already hear the next note a tiny bit, so it means that this bar 3, this sync point that I have created, is a little bit late. So I can simply take it and drag it a little bit back. Now, this is the loop, sorry. This is the toggle point. Just a fraction back, and then we put the loop. Good. Now, I'm a bit disappointed that we cannot see the, the waveform. Let me see. Uh, waveform. Waveform is processing. It can take a few minutes. Oh, it's taking a long time. Usually, it is pretty quicker but what I wanted to show you and maybe I will show you next time is that uh, you can basically move these notes according to the waveform to just try to be very very precise and synchronized like for example I can hear that this is a little bit right? 
All right, and then I can start the next section. Boom. Oh, that's easy. So the note will be a C. How do I know that? Because the last note is da 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 da. So the last note and sorry and I apologize for my horrible voice, but this is what I got and you know what I don't care because I just use it uh, to explain things or just to sing in my head and <clears throat> and catch the intervals so T do this was the last note right T and the next note is da so you can count T do 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 I'm going down the B flat major scale T G F E flat D C and yeah, and this is the note. And I believe he plays for like three beats. So I have to create a minim, so plus, and I simply add the dot to it. And then I type the letter C. Oh, yeah. When you type a note, uh, sound slides put the closest in terms of interval, the closest note from the note before. So in this case, has put it up an octave. So to drop it on a Mac, you do command arrow down on a PC will be control arrow down. And there you go. You have the note where you want it to be. Hmm? And then we have, of course, a quaver rest, uh, sorry, a crotchet rest. And then there is this syncopated phrase um pa pa da ba do ba pa da ba do ba pa pa da ba do ba So this will be um pa pa da ba do ba again quaver rest I'm going to put the quaver rest and then the note is D How do I know that because the previous note is da 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 that's a major second interval or the beginning of a major scale, whatever you like to remember uh, in order to recognize the interval. But this was pretty easy. And I like to write again this way. Or maybe I shouldn't. Maybe this time I will write this way. Ba, ba, da, 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 da. So that's a major scale of B flat major, right? Da 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 D, D E flat F G A B flat, F D B flat. Yes, definitely. So I simply type E flat, right, F right, G right, A right, B flat. <laughs> Right, I need to save my work and then I go to the next bar and here we have to create a tie because yeah it's a three bit note on the B flat tied to the previous note so I create a minim I add the dot and here is more magic to come if you type the letter L on your keyboard you will create a tie and the same note with the right value. Look at the magic. Letter L. Done. Done. And a crotchet rest. And those bars are done. Let's play from top. Right? You can put the chords, but I, I will talk about it later. Uh, now you can, if you if you hear, no, I think it's, it's pretty accurate. And once we have the waveform, it will be even more accurate. 
So uh, the good thing about Sounds Lies is that it's a web platform. So if I'm going out of it and I go to my main page, um, I can go to overview. I can even close this window. I won't do it now, but uh, anytime you want to come back, you click on the solo that you have prepared and you have it. You will have to yeah, re readjust uh, how it looks or maybe there is a way to to save also the format. I will investigate that. And it's accessible from any device that you are going to use. So you don't have to basically you know, have your computer with you. You can use uh, the iPad, even the phone, and you can use to practice, you know, because everywhere it will have the same functions and functionalities everywhere you go. So how good is that? Uh, all right, I think I will stop here and tomorrow I will keep transcribing and explaining uh, a bit more in depth how I do transcriptions and what is my methodology and what sort of tricks I like to use uh, when I transcribe. So I hope guys everything went well with my first live stream and uh, a big shout out to Canadian Goose who was here. I don't know if he's still here uh, but thanks for checking in on my first live stream of the Jazz Transcription Clinic. Uh, thank you everyone and see you soon. Bye bye.